We're coming up on the holidays, which gives us a chance to reflect on the past year. As real estate investors, it's time to take inventory of our progress and to figure out what's worked as well as areas of opportunity. One topic that's worth evaluating is diversification. Today, we'll be discussing how to best position yourself going into the new year. Hey, House Stackers, welcome to episode number 27 of the Stacking Houses podcast, where we're helping working professionals create a solid plan B, a side hustle of passive streams of income through real estate investing. I'm your host, Damon Santa Maria, and my goal for each show is to provide you with some practical and inspiring information so that you can create a solid financial plan for yourself. So to help you on your journey, I want to give you our beginner's guide to getting started in real estate, which outlines all of the key steps that investors need to take to acquire your first property. And you can pick this up simply by going to stackinghouses.com forward slash beginner. And while you're there, you can check out our blog, my free book, as well as a great training on where Jim and I are finding awesome deals in today's landscape. So as I mentioned in the intro, This is the time of year that I like to take inventory of my business and reflect on what's been working over the last year and also some areas where I may need to reevaluate and make some changes. It may be related to expenses in the business or even personal expenses. It may be the real estate markets I'm investing in. It may be whether or not to sell a property or acquire more properties in a certain area. I'm always trying to fine tune how to allocate capital where it'll make the greatest impact. And one area that's really important to me is diversifying capital as a risk mitigation strategy. And today, this is more difficult than ever because there's so many distractions, mainly because there are several opposing schools of thought. Many of the financial investment gurus on CNBC will discuss the need to have a balanced portfolio of stocks, bonds, and gold. And this was the traditional way of thinking for many, many years. And Warren Buffett, uh, you know, he does not diversify. And he's even quoted by saying, diversification is protection against ignorance and makes very little sense for those who know what they're doing. Now, who am I to go against Warren Buffett, one of the greatest investors of all time? Well, I'll explain my philosophy and let you decide for yourself. But let me first start off by highlighting the market that we're in today. So if, you're lis- if you've been listening to any of the financial media on TV or social media, it's all geared towards the sexy stuff. Electronic vehicles, cryptocurrency, and NFTs have been discussed ad nauseum. And I'm sure you're well aware of you know, crypto and Bitcoin and Ethereum. But for those of you that have not heard the term NFT, it stands for non-fungible tokens. And they got a lot of notoriety this year as a result of an artist named Beeple, who sold a piece of digital artwork for over $69 million dollars. Now, this was a collection of 5,000 individual images and is among one of the highest pieces of artwork ever sold at auction. And what makes NFT so interesting is the underlying data is stored on blockchain technology, similar to how Bitcoin works. And as compelling as blockchain, crypto, and NFTs are, I'll be the first one to admit that I don't really understand how they work. I'm sure they'll have you know, a great future, but investing into them seems speculative at best. Yes, there are some folks that are becoming overnight millionaires as a result, and that's great. But for me, I'm going to stick with the asset classes that have been around for hundreds of years. And here in lies the problem, and it's called shiny object syndrome. And it's constantly chasing after the latest phenomenon that promises riches in a short amount of time, with very little work. And the biggest challenge here is that these are the stories that make the news. These are the invalidated social media reels that makes you pause and ask yourself if you've missed the boat. 
If only I would have bought Tesla or Facebook or Bitcoin years ago, you'd be sitting on a fortune today. And it's absolutely true. And I remember buying and selling Tesla back in 2019 when it was around $200 a share. And now it's over $1,100. So yes, I've lost out on my own personal fortune. But for every one of those stories, there are a hundred untold stories of the real estate millionaire that is financially free. And granted, investing in simple and boring three-bedroom, two-bath houses is not all that exciting. It's not the best conversation starter at a party, but let's not forget that real estate has created more millionaires than any other asset class in America. Now, some people will say, what about stocks? So, just to preface this, I run in the circle of real estate gurus that say that stock, the stock market is simply the largest rigged Ponzi scheme in history. Although I would argue that Social Security and Medicare are up there as well. But historically, stocks have done very well over time, averaging about 8% annually. And this is a good return. However, many of my properties average about 30% a year. So yes, stocks and bonds have their place in a well-diversified portfolio, as well as compared to the amount of work they are, it's been mostly passive. It may be surprising to learn that my wife and I have a sizable amount of our assets sitting in Wall Street investments. In fact, we've done quite well over the years with our stocks and mutual funds. In 2021, these accounts have had a double-digit return, but they can also have dramatic downturns as well. Heck, last Friday, the Dow was down over 900 points in the single day. And let's also not forget the fact that at the beginning of COVID, the Dow dropped from 29,000 down to 19,000 in one month. So one of the main issues I have from an investment perspective is that the stock market has so much liquidity that it's very difficult to get out of the way once that big bear wants to jump out the window, especially since 50 to 60% of the daily trading volume is executed by computers these days. And these same real estate gurus argue that income properties offer the benefits of leverage, tax benefits, and are real assets that are slower moving, allowing investors to have time to get in and out without entire fortunes to be lost in market capitulation. And I absolutely agree. It's because of leverage that allows investors to have such great returns, and it's the tax benefits that are unmatched anywhere else, including the stock market. And for these reasons, I favor real estate. But there is one area where stocks tend to have an advantage, and it relates to retirement accounts, more specifically 401ks. Since we've seen pension funds dwindle down and lose popularity, 401ks are many times funded by the companies that are offering them. Getting that 3% match is pretty attractive, but the investment choices are not. And with the exception of offering REITs or real estate investment trusts, which, by the way, are not great investments, especially since COVID has forced many businesses to reconsider brick-and-mortar shops, almost all retirement accounts are tied to Wall Street stocks and bonds. And this lack of choice is especially problematic for those that want greater diversification. So what's an investor to do? Well, I like to take the position of sitting on top of a fence and seeing both sides as the two are not mutually exclusive. In fact, I use the strategy of converting my old 401k, which had grown to a sizable nest egg, and I converted it to a self-directed IRA with the purpose of investing in real estate. And over that time, I would estimate that I only contributed about 10% of the current balance that's sitting in there today. The remaining portion was provided by my employer, as well as huge market gains in both the stock market as well as the real estate gains over the years in which uh, have resulted in several hundreds of thousands of dollars in gains. Another strategy that may be advantageous is to diversify within your own household. And my wife and I are very fortunate that uh, she uh, works for an employer that contributes an astounding 8% to her retirement. 
Many people are happy with just 3%. And in my opinion, we would be crazy not to make that contributing match in order to receive the employer match. And in this case, she contributes 6%. Uh, so in total, this is 14% of her salary goes to retirement. The problem I see is that many individuals and families go all in on one asset class and are not diversified enough. And this leads me to my next point, which is diversify your income sources. If you only pull income from your job, you're way too under diversified. And think about it. If you lose your job and you have no additional income coming in, this is extremely risky. Today, my wife and I have close to 30 sources of income streams. If she loses her job, it would be bad, but we still have 29 other sources of money still coming in. By the time I was laid off from my corporate job, I already had more passive income from our real estate portfolio to cover for the losses of my W-2 income. And this is the drum that I keep beating. So as you set your goals for 2022, please include the objective of getting more investment properties or more assets that produce cash flow. So in summary, you should want to diversify to balance out the inherent risk involved in investing. It's okay to spread your money around as long as you're confident in what you're investing in. Maybe you take a small percentage of your money and put it into that blackjack fund where you buy individual stocks, cryptos, or NFTs, but never throw all your money on red or black. And remember, hope is not a strategy. So I hope that this has been helpful because deciding where and when to invest your money is a big decision that can affect your net worth. So if you are seriously considering investing in yourself and becoming a professional, I highly encourage you to sign up for Stacking Houses Academy, where you can learn the step-by-step -step process that Jim and I took to each grow our multi-million dollar businesses. And if you liked what you heard today, I would appreciate a like or a share or even a review on the platform that you're listening on because it really does help some of us guys that are just getting started on our podcasting journey. And it also helps other house stackers find our great content. And as I mentioned at the beginning of the show, I wanna give you our beginner's guide to getting started in real estate, which outlines all of the key steps that investors need to take in order to acquire your first, your second, your third property. And you can pick this up simply by going to stackinghouses.com forward slash beginner. And until next time, happy investing, my friends.